Today we're going to have a little rant about all these stabilizers. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Welcome back guys. If you're new to this channel, we'll be glad to have you on board this family. And um, here we do music movies, tech reviews, short films, feature documentaries. So if you're new here and you're interested in watching movies, because we do movie reviews as well, all that and more. Uh, so you might want to hit the subscribe button. That would be appreciated. Just in case you hear the kids sound on the background, that's how it is these days. It's hard to record a YouTube video without some kids in the background because they all are home. You know, I had planned to make this video a while ago, uh, about a year ago, and somehow I just never got to do it. And now it's looking like my opinion might just be changing regarding the preference because I did say in, in my previous video that I was going to do this. I was going to do this comparison, you know, which should you should uh, choose over the other. But um, after this guy came, um, I'm like rethinking, you know. So we're going to break it down. First of all, this guy um, is great. It's not in his best form yet. Um, some people have good units. Some people have bad units. So, um, but it's up to you to jump in the train right now or wait a little bit longer. But this is definitely going to be a good, uh, a good product to recommend in the future when everything straightens out. So, and when I'm talking about gimbals, I'm talking about in general, not just uh, uniquely this Crane 3S, okay? Now, let me assume that you're a new filmmaker, a young filmmaker, you don't have any of these gears yet. Your first choice, in my opinion, now everything I'm going to say is what I think. All right, you have the final decision, but from experience, from you know, meeting, rubbing minds with other people, professionals, and stuff like that, this will be the way to go. The rig, the rig, the rig, the rig, the rig, the rig. About stabilizing pictures. Now, sometimes we overlook some of these things. The slider. The slider is a very useful tool. In fact, there's, the, there's a higher percentage chance, there's a better chance that you would do a, good, a better production with this slider than with this. This one, you know, even though the learning curve is, is not high, you, um, to be able, you have to be extra creative to get really outstanding shots with this one. Now, I know that you could do the uh, vortex uh, mode, um, rotates the camera. Uh, this cannot do it. And uh, this, which is the glide cam, they can't do it. For now, uh, we'll come to that later. I think uh, on newer versions, we'll be able to do it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But those are things that you don't use every time. You don't always need to use. The chances of overdoing it is, is high, you know? So unless your car, you are shooting a feature and the car is flipping over and then you want to get that impression and have this thing circles, you have to have a good reason to use it. But, 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 these guys, you could have, if you have a ball head on this thing, you could have a, you could slide this thing and this is automated, but you could also use it manual. Uh, cheap, cheap uh, slider, it's um, motorized, yes, it is motorized, um, it could go back and forth on its own from point A to B, and this is just like uh, 200 bucks, 190, 199, you know, so it's becoming cheaper these days, sliding back and forth with the pound and teeth held, uh, held like on the tripod, you could have that uh, second and third dimension to it, like you know, while it's moving forward, you can also pan to the side. You know, you could tilt and stuff like that and get really great shots, you know. In a movie world, in, um, for those of us aspiring to make our features one day, this is really, actually, this is the way to go. Now, I don't mean this in particular. This is the only one I have um, for a glide cam. This is the only glide cam I have. 
uh, it involves a little bit of learning curve to get used to it. Unlike this one, you can pick up and set up and follow instructions. This you have actually, this you actually have to learn how to use. And I'm still learning how to use that. I'm not a pro at it yet. All right. So, but um, I did do the review of this some time ago. But this is this is not a professional glide car that you could really should be comparing with this. But this is all I have. So I'm using it as a um, illustration, you know, they are really better ones. When I'm talking about industry standard, there's a little bit more, uh, they are a little bit more sophisticated. Same principles, but a little bit more sophisticated. And, 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 and that's how it even developed into the Ari Trinity that uh, we saw uh, Potato Jet on his channel, where he brought a guy to demonstrate how that thing works. Um, that is, if, if you want to get a hang of that, this will be the way to start off first, you know. That has become the Ari Trinity has become like industry standard now. So uh, if you are looking to getting in that level, this is the way to go. Like whatever glide cam you have, keep mastering, you know. If you're already good at it, don't lose touch, don't let your Kimball distract you from that, keep practicing it, then look for better, uh, more industry uh, standard devices to practice with, rent, and I think that's what I'm gonna do, and uh, get a feel of what the industry uses, you know, so that uh, if you find yourself in that situation, you'll be able to be relevant and hopefully make some money doing that. Let me see if I can get get some order in here now if you're starting out you just got a camera you have this big dream we all do right <laughs> you have this big dream uh, to make a movie someday shoot a feature start from here get a rig make your um, camera usable in a professional environment you know get whatever you need to maximize if it's a black magic camera you don't need uh, to have a recorder if you have the gs5 yes you need the v um what's the other one this is the um, shogun 7 you could use the um, v5 uh, you know ninja 5 yeah so record raw into that you don't find out all the stuff and that's the way to go but this is really um the next i would say because this is basic now for real professional units this comes on this a real professional unit can handle this that, that rig with, because they are really big and uh, heavy and strong and uh, they, they have uh, some rigs easy rigs and stuff like that to even hold them when they become too heavy um, so that would be the next way to go not this like i said this is just a presentation of the you know uh, professional um, glide cam that's this is that's what this stands for this is all I have. Say it again. Please don't shoot me. Uh, start here. Come in here. Uh, these are uh, these hardly come in on a set. What they use on a set is uh, dollies. Okay, the dolly back and forth. When you don't have that budget on Indian productions, then you use this. Creatively, this can do the same thing. You know, not as effective, but what do you have? You use what you have, right? This is as useful as the rest when it comes to what it does right funny enough the last uh, recommendation like if you have this you have this you have this you may depending on what you want to do you may skip this and come to this because things are changing fast when we get a real product out of it like errorless and bug free without a problem this thing is a beast now besides all these ones, the tripod is your first friend. It's the first thing you should get. Let me say this again. The tripod, if you want to make films, you want to make production, weddings, or whatever, it doesn't even matter where, even YouTube videos, the tripod is the first thing you need to have underneath your camera. Because that's, that's the starting point. So, I'm assuming that's basic, we don't even need to talk about that. Don't forget, when I talk about the rig, you should include the shoulder setup too. 
this is a lot stable. For stable shots, a shoulder setup will be a lot better than a hand setup because you get less tired and your, your hands get less jittery. You know, those little shakes, you know, are, are like uh, less visible. But if you're shooting like a feature film, you know, you might want to go shoulder rig because you will get tired and um, those things will start showing with time. So now coming to this guy, which I consider to be the last of all, the least important, even though it's taking over real fast, like making all these units less useful, it is not quite there yet, but this is the closest to like, you know what, get this and forget the rest. Yo, by the way, I shot a music video during quarantine, so. I'll talk to you about that in another video, how I did it and what the rules, we're following the rules of course, um, but I'll also say why. Uh, but so most of the shots I used um, this as a tripod. Now you know that this is fixed now. All the axes are locked. So it's not going anywhere. And it's something I've always wanted to do. I've been trying it on the Mosaic Air, but it was not an actual production rig. It was cage with uh, one rail, a short rail for photo focus. That was it, you know, and I was able to put it on the Mosaic Air and that was it. But what about the V-mount battery? What about the extended life? How are we going to solve all that? You know, so actually this is what I'm, my plan for this rig when, when I get this thing working real good. My plan for this rig is I want to have this here on this side. This thing is heavy, by the way. If, you, if you're planning to get it, you better be ready for the right stuff. This thing can hold it for only for a while. Well, I'm testing, I'm still testing this uh, arm, if it can hold it for long, but so far so good. I have two other options that I bought just because they keep failing. Um, on the FS5, this side uh, monitor or the LCD is useful if you uh, all you need is, all I need this, why I need this on the FS5 is for recording purposes and then, you know, HDR view. Okay, so uh, my plan is to get this one on the side. Um, there's a way which I don't know yet. I've looked at for videos for it. I see a lot of people putting this, this stuff here. Um, the only one I saw how he did it was with a magic arm, which I really don't want to subscribe to. They keep failing, okay? Um, that would be, it looks good, but um, realistically, I've worked with magic arms before and I know that they keep failing. If you know of one that works really great, that's awesome, let me know. Trust me, I have used magic arms on um, my Field World 7 inch monitor. This thing is light. But not every every magic app could carry. I used small rig filled me on this one. Counter seal uh, held better, but you see over time you still have issues with the screws. You know, it eventually fails. So I don't want magic app if you know a better solution. But I do see a lot of people installing this on this side. So I want to have this on this side. I want to get a reliable way to get it on the side and put it on this gimbal, you know, with the battery and power like this. I know it can fit, but I just want to know how to mount it on the side. So my point is, this guy can take your rig, and if it's a rig that you can carry, if it's one that you can carry, I could do it. I could do it on the Black Magic anyway. So maybe it's not so useful after all, but I'll say. It, for those who can, you can use this as your gimbal and when maybe the battery goes out or you're not using it, um, instead of taking out the rig, you could, in practice, hold it this way, you know, and still have a, a better, because it, it's really not light. Now, I, with this grip, this is the lightest I've felt of this, on this gimbal. From this angle, this setup is heavier from this angle. If I hold it like this, this is heavier. Depending, you could lay it on the table, you could lay it, uh, it depends. You already have plans what you're gonna do. So if you need a tripod, get a tripod underneath. But in a pinch, 
you'll be able to walk away with this one and walk, use it as a tripod and as a gimbal at the same time. And as a rig setup, like just holding it, it's a, it, it, I mean, that's what it's turning into now. It's becoming this. This whole new unit is becoming this. Now you will get a fairly, you know, stable shot doing this or even holding at the shoulder. But when you mount it on this guy, and even though it's turned off, you'll be surprised, you know, you could pan, you could pan. You'll get, a, you know, you'll be surprised what you can achieve with this guy. You know, so I was able to pull up some shots with this, without taking it off. I still use the gimbal while it was turned off. That's what I'm saying for a beginner, okay? So you might want to start with your tripod, get a rig, which you always need. You need, you, you can't jump here and this will not give you, um, this will take your camera, flip it around, fancy things, but you will always need power constant power so set up your rig if you need a monitor get a monitor attached and all that this is the way to go this is ready to function okay now when you get from this stage you can say okay i want to get some floating shots i want to be able to you know get some very effective uh, you know movement shots and stuff like that besides this one that you know that can take me to the next level yeah go on this and then this and this. But know that at some point, we are all coming back to this, at least for now, you know? And I'm, like I said, again, once again, I'll say, I don't mean this particular one. I mean Glidecam, professionally. Glidecam is still the winner, still the industry standard. And it's all up to you figure out what you really need at the time but regardless of what you need you need a tripod when you get your camera you need a tripod when you get a tripod you will need to rig up your your camera to be able to think of anything professional and when you do that you can decide then it's really up to you to decide where you want to jump to uh, that's gonna be it but before I go I want to say that my 2,000 subscribers giveaway is coming up and um, we're working on what's going to be given away okay I'll probably tell you in the next video right uh, but we are not so far away we are like uh, less than a hundred uh, subscribers away and anything can happen anytime we could be there in any time so um subscribe to this channel like comment let me know your feedback on which order you think you sh it should be the other way around it's really up to you and why that's how we'll learn if you have a reason why you will do it the other way around then i would love to know so we could all learn from it and in the comments below is where ideas flow so thank you guys for watching if you're interested in any of these gears the links are always in the description and um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.